to another episode of the 710 of Slickville Show. I am your host, Mr. 710. We back in these streets. I am joined once again by my co-host, Z, in these streets. How you living today? I'm living good, living good. Living good, that's what I'm talking about. And we also have um, a special guest joining us this evening. Uh, we're going to be talking about Astrology 101 with Mr. Darren Brown. All right, and so, look. I, I I just gotta let y'all know, man. I'm super excited about this show because it's a lot of stuff that people don't know about astrology. It's a whole bunch of it's a whole bunch of people that um that get a bad name, especially like those uh, Miss Cleos that's out here in these streets. But um, <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is no this is not one of them. This is not one of them. Um, but yeah, like I said, y'all know how we do this. This is an interactive show. So hit that chat room. Go ahead and um. Uh, Comment, like, share. If you got any questions or comments, call in. The phone number is 470-251-4343. All right. Like I said, we already know how we do this thing, okay? And so, look, I want to tell you all real quick. We, I just got back from uh, my family reunion. And just a quick story, a quick story. Because you know how you talk to some people sometimes, and I was on my way on from uh, – I was, we took a lift back last night, and this guy was telling me about this uh, – the streaming service that he works on. And, you know, I was cool, I was with him, until he tried to start talking about stuff that was gonna relate to me. And so he was like, yeah, you can watch any movie on there. Like, any, any stupid movies like Friday, next Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh. Black. Black, <laughs> you call out all the black movies. Okay, cool. Now those, those stupid movies, why didn't you say Grease? Or, or uh, a few good men in one of those movies. Not that I've seen either one of those, but still, don't don't just call out like Friday Minister Society. Yeah, he get a chance. Poetic justice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wow, that's you know those gangbanger movies that you're talking about. <clears throat> hey, well look, how's everything been your way? Everything's good. Yeah, everything's good. Nothing crazy happened since the last time we talked. Mm. No. Something happens every day, but now nothing worth nothing. No, nah, no. Nah. Uh-uh. You ain't have to cuss nobody out at the job. Um, I don't. I don't do that. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. <laughs> <That's what's up. laughs> well, I be, I be right on the verge, you know. They still. I wonder if my badge is gonna work tomorrow when I go back. Um, <laughs> I have control of that, and I won't be back until Thursday. So you're. Oh, cool. That right. works for me. Got that. Definitely works for me. Well, look. Let me um. Uh, Okay, there we go. Let me um, introduce our guest. We have Darren Brown, um, super duper astrologist. He gonna uh, give us a whole lot of information on astrology one on one. I know this is something that Z is definitely interested in. I have my, I read it every now and then. Don't know how true it is all the time uh, when they tell me good fortune is gonna come my way if I just be patient. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's all about what you believe. It's I, all about what you believe. Yeah, I, I've been patient. Okay, well, you know. I, I've been patient. But Dan, how, how you doing today? Life is good. Life is good, my brother. I can't complain. How are you today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Awesome. We got Darren in from uh, St. Louis. You know, we got a uh, rivalry going on between uh, St. Louis and Chicago, but it, it's all good. You know, I let them slide because you know, they all they all family and whatnot, but it's all good. <laughs> but look, so um, how long have you been interested in uh, astrology? Well, that story started at nine years old. Um, I was at a party with one of my aunties, and they were listening to this album, and it was a man narrating about the signs. And I remember the people there being fascinated. And when I heard my own birthday, I remember being fascinated about it. That was my introduction to astrology. Fast forward 14 years later, after I got out of the Navy, that's when I really became what you said, an astrologist, but an astrologist is not what I am now. I'm an astrologer now. There is a difference, uh, just allow me this moment. An astrologist is one who is passionate about astrology. They they study astrology, but they aren't professional with it. Okay. 
All right. The astrologer is the one who is actually like a psychologist with with his practice or a life coach, all rolled into one actually. You know, so that's that's the big difference. The astrologer is the professional, the astrologist is the hobbyist. So I get out of the Navy at 20, 24, 25, I can't remember how old I was. And I bought a book called The Only Astrology Book You'll Ever Need. Mm-hmm. I sat and read this book in three nights, 400 some pages. And this was in the days long before the internet was a commercial thing. <laughs> you know, so coming by astrology information was, was book only. In fact, my family used to make fun of me because I was studying astrology. I can you know, see now that. Now today, those same people seek me out for advice and insight. Mm-hmm. I, I so at any rate, um, from that point, I just kept learning more and more about astrology. It wasn't until a life-changing um, event happened, in, happened to me, and I turned to astrology to help me find myself. Because I knew there was something to the birthdays and something to the planetary alignment that resonated with me. It always had. And I got a reading, and in that reading, I learned that I had the potential to be an astrologer. Now, let let me preface that. To this point, I have still yet to meet, to that point, I had still yet to meet an astrologer. I ordered a report out of a magazine and they sent me this report and told me I had the potential to be an astrologer. So this life-changing event happened. I dove into my chart and to heal myself, actually. Uh, going through a bad, uh, bad relationship, bad breakup, heal myself. Two years later, I decided I want to learn this on a level so that I can help other people the way I was able to help myself. And that's why I sit on your show today. And that's dope, man. I know. I'm. I've heard of some of the family, you know, calling you up and saying, you know, I'm gonna call Darren and so he can so he can look at some stuff for me. Mm-hmm. And so, what all goes into what all goes into it when you give somebody a reading? What all goes into that? All right. So, the 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 astrology that you see in the newspaper, magazines, astrology that you get on any website online that says put in your birthday and we'll give you a forecast. That's not astrology. <laughs> That's a bunch of. Can I cuss on this show? Because I might let one loose. You good? Okay, great. Hey, you. That, that's a bunch of. That's a bunch of bull. That's a bunch of bull, man. The mm-hmm. stuff you see. If it's just asking for your birthday and it's not asking for birth time and a location of birth, it's not real astrology. It's only going to affect one twelfth of the population. Okay. So, with true astrology, we look at the birth day, year, location, and the all-important time of birth. Because that mo- that moment that you take oxygen into your lungs, you become a living soul, right? Mm-hmm. And this is when the breath of life, the breath of, this is when God enters us, all right? And the chart, on the eastern horizon, whatever sign and degree is on the eastern horizon, in the moment that you take your first breath, this determines your personality and it can give insight into your physical makeup, the way you project into the world, the way you perceive the world, the way the world perceives you. It supersedes even the sun sign. The birth time is the most important factor in astrology all right okay. so i cast a chart and then one other thing no two people not even twins have the same birth chart they got right? different because times, they, right? they do not exit right. the wind the womb at the same time gotcha. they do not take their first breath at the same time all right and the universe is in constant motion and the ascendant changes one degree every four minutes And that one degree can make one twin outgoing and extroverted and the other one shy and introverted. Four minutes of difference can do that. That makes sense. Right. So the birth chart uh, is comprised of the 
location, time, and place of birth and, and, and date of birth, right? And it gives insight into all areas of your life. Uh, and with, uh, we can see pretty much anything, you know, uh, it's, it's great to, it's a great tool to use to, first off, Imhotep said, man, know thyself. And in knowing thyself, thy shall know God. All right? right. And a tenet of astrology is know thyself. As above, so below. As within, so without. I'm, I'm the son of a preacher, y'all, so. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was going to, I was going to, um, you actually took, uh, you took, a question that I was going to ask you in regards to, I'm learning the uh, seven hermetic principles, and mm -hmm. I put court, the uh, the court, the law of correspondence. I put that with astrology. Absolutely. To me, it goes hand in hand. So it's funny astrology that you say that. Goes hand in hand with tarot, with numerology, mm -hmm. with runes, with any of those esoteric disciplines. They're all based, they, they all find their foundations in astrology. Right. Listen, before there was any ology, before any ology, there was astrology, mm -hmm. right? Yep. When we go back to as far back as our recent history can show us, prior to all this technology, all they had was the sun and moon and fire. They were always looking up for symbols and signs for for, for things. Right. When they see an eclipse, they knew something ominous was going to happen. And that's real. A full moon. Yeah. The blue it's moon, real. the full moon. Yeah, it that, is. That, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, I might answer a whole lot of questions before you ask them, so. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so do you get a special reading when you look directly into the eclipse? Say that again? <laughs> You get a special reading when you look directly into the eclipse. Well, they, I they just came in for his scrap. So, um, what do you what do you think about the meaning of your name? I know that that's the that comes along with astrology as well. Like, okay, so I've done a natal chart before. Um, I had my exact that birthplace, and my sun and my moon are the same. They're mm -hmm. both that the means, same. That means you were born during a, a new moon. Yes, exactly. So I'm like, okay, let's see what my name means. So I, I started Googling my name, and they came up with a whole bunch of different names that were not Mine. My name is AZIA. So finally, out of nowhere, the universe put it in front of me. I have no doubt about that. And Rising Sun came up. And I'm like, okay, how can I put that together with, with astrology? Like, how, can, how does that go together? So you're born on a new moon. Mm -hmm. Now, before I even answer that, you're you're getting into some numerology when you're talking about the name. Right. I don't pretty I don't deal with names on that level. Okay. But knowing that you can break a name down to a number and that number is going to correspond to your chart. I'm wondering if you were born right at sunrise? Um no. 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 I was born at um actually 3:14 in the afternoon. Three fourteen in the afternoon. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so the rising sun, then 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 we're gonna look at the rising sign. Hmm, okay. Do you know your rising sign. Okay. Do you know your rising sign? Um <laughs> no. All right, don't no worries, no, no. worries. Most of society don't. So when um, you say it, when you say your rising sun, what do you mean by that? Like So let me break that down. Mm-hmm. The birth time determines the sign that is on the eastern horizon at the time you take your first breath. Okay, okay. okay? This is when the soul takes possession of your body, right? And that energy 
comprises 40% of who you are, more so than your sun sign. Hmm. So I read that's, something that said from the east. Does that make that's sense? That's right. Absolutely. It's so that's what that is. The horizon. Ah, Because got that's it. where the sun rises on the eastern horizon. And the moon rises on the eastern horizon. Mm. And every planet rises on the easternmost horizon. Okay. Okay? Got so it. the answer to your name may be tied into your ascendant or rising sign. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. You didn't. And if we have the if we have the time, yes. I'd like to I'd like to do a sample reading for you. That would be great. Done. Thank you. Okay. When, look, when it, if, whenever you want to jump into a sample, re you got a sample reading on deck. Or well, all I have to do is get her birthday. I can pull up the chart, lick and split, jump right into it. Hey man, why not? Because I, I do got some other questions, but if what? Well, if let's get your questions first. Let's get to your questions. Oh, first. Okay. Let's get people are listening. So and I want to build the anticipation for Asia. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so how many times, like, when you meet somebody, um, and you meet somebody just, is it is it hard not to kind of go into those things and then, like, try to see what kind of person it is? So let's just say you, um, I don't know your uh, relationship status right now, but, you know, just to see if a person has certain qualities and characteristics that you're looking for, is that something that you've, uh, done not on a creepy level, but uh. <laughs> yes, so, <that's> <laughs> so in my early days of learning to uh, practice astrology, I used to play in the uh, chat rooms on AOL, and wow. I would offer sample readings. You had a disc, right? But <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I, I I use it on some Mac shit too, you know. But yes, it is, it, is, it is difficult sometimes to refrain from, because I'm very intuitive and I can pick up on an energy when I'm around somebody. Oh yeah. And I'm a Gemini rising, so I'm naturally curious and I want to know. So, you know, I've, I've found clever ways of, 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 of getting the information I want uh, to see <laughs> who this person is. It's, you know, no matter who you meet, in life, if you have a one-on-one -on -one for even a second with this person, there is a connection between your chart and that person's astrological chart. Even if you never see them again, there is a connection. Okay. So I can, I can pick up on that kind of thing. You know, um, I was at a, a gathering last night and I picked up on an energy that I detected as the Pisces moon and bingo, it's Pisces moon. So yeah, um, I do often ask what someone's birthday is so I can know who I'm dealing with. What does Pisces moon mean? Well, it's the Pisces moon is, is the genie of the, of the zodiac. All right. What I mean by that is the sign of Pisces has a, uh, a key phrase and it is, I believe. Mm -hmm. The key phrase of Pisces is, I believe. And the Piscean nature is one that is unfeathered belief. Whether it's the belief in something good or belief for something bad. You know, they are very hopeful, very romantic, uh, or dreamy, thinking it, but they often want the best for everybody. Okay? so. A Pisces moon person could have a friend who come to him and say, hey, I want to do thus and so. And the Pisces moon person would believe this thing, believe that they could have it so strongly, even more strongly than the one who wants the damn thing. And they manifest it for them. I've seen it happen time and time again. You know, but on the downside of that, the Pisces moon is one that is a, a flame for a narcissist, oh. okay? They attract yeah. narcissists because they give unconditionally and at times they don't stand up for themselves. So the Pisces often sacrifice themselves, put themselves on a cross for the betterment of everyone else. And then when it's time for the Pisces to need someone, ain't nobody there.
The Pisces moon woman does this thing constantly. She'll fall in love with somebody because she sees the, the, the divine in him. She sees the God in him. And that's fine that she see that. The problem is she treats him as though he is aware of the God in him that she sees. And most times he's clueless, right? So she's treating him one way and she's not getting that treatment back. She's giving, 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 and he's taking, 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 taking. And she's loving unconditionally and he eventually drains her. One morning she wakes up, she's in love with a motherfucker she can't stand. <laughs> you know, that's what they do. And I picked up on that with someone last night. Man, I would probably be using all of that stuff for evil. I can't even pretend. Well, well not for evil. There is a responsibility, man, that comes with this. You're taking advantage you know, of it. There's a ethics and responsibility. Yeah. Uh, when people get a reading, they are in, they are given the same privilege that a doctor and an attorney gives them. Right. <clears throat> right. Because, man, I go into closets. I go into secrets. I go. I open up stuff that people haven't talked about in 30 years. I go into. I, I see. I can see things from people's childhood. They have scarred them to this day. You know, it's some sensitive information, so you have to give them, because you could ruin someone. Right. Oh, yeah. So they have to have that confidentiality. It's important. Absolutely. Absolutely. What's up? Hmm. Okay. Well, I don't have any questions that he hasn't answered. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, man, you know, I was looking at. Is, have you ever been in a situation where a couple has came to you and and asked you for a reading and you saw something that was negative, even though they was like madly in love with each other, but it was like, hey, were you like, hey, this, this ain't gonna work, huh? Well, I have said that. <laughs> I have said that. But I've also, so I, I treat astrology like the weatherman. When I give some insight from the chart, I'm telling you that the potential for this is strong because of thus and so, right? But how it actually manifests, that's up to the universe. I'll give you a case in point. I was doing a reading for a lady last February, February of 17, down in Florida. I was giving her a monthly forecast. And I saw the potential for a burn on her foot on a particular Friday in February 2017. And I warned her, I want you to protect your feet. The most practical way this could happen would be in the kitchen, handling hot grease or hot water in sandals and you spill it on your foot. So on this day, one day before, one day after, protect your feet. That's all I told her. On the day that it was most strong to occur, she chose not to cook that day at all. Instead, she went out to her garden and she was picking food out of her garden. 12, 15, her left foot on a red ant mound. She said, Darren, my foot burned for four days. I couldn't see that. Wow. I could see the potential for a burn, but that's it. How it plays out, it's up to the universe. That's right. So when I get that situation with couples, I first go back to when they met mm -hmm. and talk about the red flag they might have ignored <laughs> that brought them to the reason they're sitting in front of me. You know? Mm -hmm. I, I or if they are, uh, if they've gone through something and uh, they've gotten to the other side, I can go back and tell them where there's still work to be done, you know? So the other thing is, even though the charts indicate a thing, when you're dealing with couples, people have choices. The charts can say, that these two people are very harmonious and should live a long life together, you know, mostly happy. But it 
we got choices. True. And if, 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 if she don't want that, it ain't happening. If he don't want that, it ain't happening. I had a chart, I had a couple that they had, their charts were filled with square. A square is a 90 degree angle, all right? A square, to, to look at it from a sign standpoint, a square is the Aries and the Cancer in a relationship together, all right? Is that a good thing or bad thing? 90, well, 90 degrees. Um, 90 degrees is conflict and opportunities for growth. So it's both good and bad, but it ain't <laughs> never easy. It ain't never easy. It's always conflict, all right? So I've seen squares all over charts. I'm like, look, you guys are attracted to each other, madly in love right now because the libido was turned the hell up. Right. But when that subsides, you're gonna look at each other and be like, I don't even like this one. <laughs> because it wasn't built on anything but lust. Bing. We can see that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's um. So with the with the weatherman, you know, we 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 talk about the weatherman because he's like, hey, you know, it's probably not gonna rain today. I didn't I didn't flesh out my point there. Okay. So what we're doing is giving what is possible in a period of time in your life based on the way the planets are aligned. Listen, uh, real life. May 2nd, Mars entered Capricorn and squared Uranus. From an astrological perspective, Mars is disruption, okay? Um, and Uranus is, ind is indicative of earthquakes, volcanoes, uh, lightning strikes. Mars is the same in 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 energy. The very next day, boom! The volcano in, in um, Hawaii, Hawaii exploded, and seven more around the world it erupted at one time. It's all indicated in the damn planetary alignment back in May, early May. Would that be like um, retrograde? Is it something so, like that? Can you I'm going to go right now tell you, listen, August, is going to be hell because Mercury, both Mars and Mercury are retrograde. Yeah. And they are opposite one another, and there is an eclipse in the in the same sign that Mercury and Mars are transiting right now. When these two are retrograde, and in the plant in the signs that they are cardinal signs, cardinal signs initiate. Mars is in an Earth sign. Uh, Mercury's in a, in a water sign and going to retrograde at the 29th degree, which indicates trauma with water, uh, tragedy with water. Watch, we're going to have either a hurricane, uh, a tsunami, or a flash flood. We're going to get reports of people dying of drowning. Uh, we're going to get more reports of people committing suicide. Uh, there's going to be more law, law enforcement um, agents being arrested this time around uh there's some regulations going on okay and moving forward in 2020 uh, we have an alignment forming that has not formed since 1285 really right since 1285 1285, and 1285 at that time the ancient kingdoms of ghana and zimbabwe where at their zenith, you mm. know, Mansa Musa walked the earth not long after that, right? Uh, the Renaissance started in that time. Right. The Ming Dynasty rose to power during that period, and then the 300 years following 1285, we saw a shift on the world stage. Those com those countries that were in power when this alignment came around were no longer in power, and this was the birth third world nation. So in 2020 and 2021, there's going to be a reset on a societal level, uh, economically, politically, socially, religiously. All of this is going to be reset. We will see this play out over our lifetime, but we won't see it. We won't see the completion of it. All right. What we see in these next two months is going to be a preview. We will see we'll see 
lightning strikes of things occur. We might see a rebirth of these volcanoes exploding too. You know, but this summer is going to be a mess. We already see the riots going on and the protests going on. Mars, Uranus, and Mercury all square one another. Indicate that stuff. You know. Man. So, so um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So those Think who are that. those who are aware of what's going on need to be very mindful of what their emotions at this time. Absolutely. Um, what about, and see, that's the thing, the people who are not aware, that's who I worry about because they. Well, you can't. They need to cancel their cruises. You can't, you can't. Don't go swimming. No. I, I worry, I worry. <laughs> I, I so worry. <laughs> it, it, I, each I one teach one. That's all right, 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 right. But you cannot wake everybody up and people are happily asleep. Yes, they are. They are very. You know? sleep <laughs> so when that one comes you will exhaust yourself trying to wake people up yes you know so then you just have to wait until your light attracts one of your kind right absolutely yeah so absolutely. just so you know um in august if you got a cruise coming cancel that get your bread back yes. don't go swimming um and in 2020, you probably need to be in Nebraska or somewhere. No <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, we have two retrogrades starting. Well, we got Mars already retrograde. Mm -hmm. And with Mars retrograde, you don't want to start anything new. And you certainly don't want to start an argument or a fight because you will most certainly lose. All right? You want to go back and redo stuff that has been half done or left undone, right? This is the time of, of cleaning up and streamlining and purging mm -hmm. and organizing and strategizing and planning for a new future. You hear right? that, baby? Mercury retrograde. Oh, this is going to be murder on those who are cerebral because the, the, the communication is going to be very garbled, you know, um, with the alignment with Mars. Mars and Mercury are, are natural enemies. Um, and the, the tug of war between the two, war of words is possible. And because Mars is involved, uh, violence can pop off. Yep. <clears throat> You know, so we're certainly going to see emotional responses uh, um, targeted to the status quo system and the system responding in force. You know, Look my at what ears... happened in Portland over the weekend. Yeah, exactly. Oh, mm, 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 mm. it's 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 it's. I just it's amazing how when the planets line up together, how things work. Even my ears no are popping. My ears are just like, it's, it's, driving, me, it's driving me crazy. But I realize what's going on. Um, it's just, it's not, gonna, it's not gonna be good. I hate to say that, I hate to put that out there, but. Um, well, let me say this. Tragedies always happen. Right. And on a mass scale, they happen. We haven't seen them on their on the, at, at, at its worst yet, and it may still be a decade or so before we do. But you can't live your life being concerned because the planetary energy is violent. You know, it's not guaranteed to play out in your life personally. You know, like last year with the hurricane down in Florida. Yeah. Um, there was aspects in my chart that indicated, uh, that there was aspects in my chart around the same time that the hurricanes hit. And they were also in my sister's chart. Well, she had to leave her house. Yeah, I, I remember that. I remember you know, that was a lot going on that time. Well, it was active in both of our charts, or it was present in both of our charts, mm -hmm. but it played out in her. Yeah, definitely, definitely. 
And guys, we are joined by Darren Brown on Status Network on the 710 of Slickville Show. If you got any questions or comments, call in 470-251-4343. Um, man, how often, how often do you check your chart? Or how often, and, and also how often does it change from, I guess, day to day or however, however often you check it? Okay, so that's a couple, that's a couple layers to that. I, I don't check my chart nearly as much as I should. <laughs> I do refer to it, you know, uh, but I'm really very concerned about other people, you know, so I'm always reading other people's charts, you know, but I do have someone to read my own, my chart for me because I kind of lack some object, di object objectivity looking at my own chart. You're too biased, you want something and you see it going the other way. So I'd rather have a third party look at my chart. Right. In terms of how often does it change? The birth chart is a snapshot of a moving universe. The universe never stops moving. Your chart never stops moving. However, the birth chart is the framework of who and what you are. It's your blueprint. Yeah. But there's a chart beyond that called a progress chart. And that chart advances at a certain rate per year. Okay. So to answer the question, how often does it change? It never changes and it always changes. Right. Gotcha. All right, we the got snapshot a of your birth never changes. But then the progression always changes. Gotcha. We got a call. 710 Slickville. Who we got on the line? This is May, and I wanted to use my birth date. All right, Renee, you want to get your birth date? You got somebody want to get a reading real quick, Dan? Um, All right. So you, what all you need, the birth date? She said her name is Renee. Renee, yep. All right, uh, month, date, and year. Month, date, and year, Renee. 42378. 42378. Or, she's being shy in these streets. And do you have a birth time? You got your birth, you got your time of birth, uh, Ms. Renee? Um, it was like, um, about 8.30 in the morning, like 8.30, 8.40, right before 9 a.m. About 8.30, 8.40, right before 9 a.m. And ask her where she got that time. Where'd you get that time from? My mom. Her mom. Okay. We will see. Yeah. You were trying to stay. <laughs> and what's her uh, location of birth? Your location of birth? Florida. Florida. What part of Florida? Pensacola. Pensacola. All right, Pensacola, Florida. Shout out to Roy Jones Jr. <laughs> All right, Pensacola, Florida. Yeah. All right, guys, so I practice a form of astrology called sidereal astrology. And this is a system that anchors the signs, or I'm sorry, anchors the planets to the constellations and fixed stars. Um, it is a form of astrology that you can literally see with your eyes. And what I mean by that is right now, you could go outside, point, this, point your sky map on your smartphone to the uh, high sky, the star that you see in the middle of the sky right now. Uh, that's very likely Saturn and Sagittarius, right? And in tropical astrology, you see, uh, you see on paper that Saturn is in in Capricorn, or or that the Sun right now is in Cancer. Well, I have news for you. At sunrise, you can take this, you can take the uh, sky map and point it to the Sun on the eastern horizon, and you will clearly see Sun is still in Gemini. All right, so with that said, Renee, I may call out some signs that don't sound familiar to you, but uh, rock with me. All right, so Renee, okay. do you have problems with your teeth and knees? Excuse me? Do you have problem with problems with your teeth 
or knees? Um, yeah. All right. I had a couple root canals. <laughs> that that's perfect. Perfect. That's what I was looking for. All right. So you a person? You, you have a personality that um, highly intelligent. You know a little bit about a whole lot of things, and you can talk about those things as though you know even more than you actually do. Does that resonate? Yes. All right. Uh, you're very flexible, adaptable, restless, uh, highly anxious, um, always on the go. When you talk, you probably talk with your hands and gestate all the time. Um, you probably don't like your hands dirty. Uh, Moon and Libra says you're very indecisive. You love your pleasures. Uh, you're a hopeless romantic. Uh, and you're likely in and out of relationships. How does that sound so far? <laughs> it sounds very accurate. Okay. All right. All right. Um, you've had trouble settling down in a profession, hopping around from job to job. You're happiest mm -hmm. when you're mm -hmm. working in a support uh, position as opposed to being out front. You work from Verizon oh, in the call that. center, Renee. <laughs> <laughs> I don't agree with that. I've always maintained jobs for five or more years, but I mean, I guess. How many I jobs have hear. you had? You've had more than four? More than. Um, actually, no. Um, my last job, I was there for six and a half years. Okay. And okay. then Fair I enough. went to another job. But I guess I did, like, I fell ill and I, left, I lost it because I was in the hospital. But then I got a new job. So that's just within the last, say, year. But before that, I was with the job for six and a half years. All right. You are, well, your chart suggests you are rather double-minded. Um, your mind is often torn between two things. Um, you are often at odds with you, uh, at odds with yourself. You were born, wow, you got a moon square Mars, moon square sun. So you, very strong temper, uh, you're a natural leader, uh, but you like to lead, you like to lead in a friendly, almost passive aggressive way, but you need to sometimes grab people by the neck, you know, not literally. <laughs> Well, you need to be more assertive. You can't be choking What say you? Out. You can't choke them out. <laughs> I, I don't choke people out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. So, are you a singer? Are you a singer? I am not. I try to sing. I know how to sing, to but sing. I don't know how to sing. Sing, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, girl. <laughs> There's musical ability indicated in your chart. Did you ever play an instrument or have the desire to play an instrument? Um, actually, I did play the flute wow. in middle school and part of high school. But then, right. instead of being in a band, I got in color art. I wanted to be a flag girl. Okay. Oh, okay, cool. But I did play the flute. Nice. Your chart also suggests that you struggle in early childhood and school. Um, it may have been something going on with the parents. Let's see. Um, I'm seeing a mother who who was very social. Your mother, your chart, Moon and Libra says mom was rather pretty, um, attractive, uh, very social. Uh, sociable, um, um, and you look to your mother for um, for uh, uh, peace and solace, particularly when you're stressed. Dad, dad was um, your chart suggests the masculine energy was one of the. Okay, let me back up. Let me back up. There's another indication about the mother or one of the parents. One of the parents was a perfectionist. Uh, rather critical, sometimes very difficult to deal with. The other parent, the indication here is they were either highly religious, spiritual, or there was absent or drunk. What fits? <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure. 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 I'm not
Well, my my mom was a perfectionist and um, religious, and my dad was a drunk. <laughs> wow. Well, that's not know, funny. Let go. I, I'm wow. Not, I'm, we're not laughing. We're not laughing, we're laughing with you. Yes. All right. So uh, this could go on and on. So I'm going to give you a, a quick look into the future, all right? You ready? Yeah. Let me get the chart up. Hold on one second. TT Triumphant on Instagram is laughing a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, hey, One second, Renee. Hey, Renee. Um, how can you never really try to sing? Like, did you did you get a church choir? <laughs> Well, I was in the church choir as a little girl, but um, when I was like older in high school, um, I was in a youth choir, but I never just just came out and like, you know, sang a lot, but I just did sing somewhat when I was going to church. Yep, see, I was looking at my chart right here, and it, uh, but now I ain't got no chart. It just seemed like a good question to ask. All right, Renee. Are you in a relationship? Are you in a relationship? Um, somewhat. It's complicated. Today. Okay. Yesterday. It's complicated. It's complicated. It's complicated. We All get right. it. We get it. All right. So this is your fifth house. All right. Well, um, just get, tell me what's what's his birthday. I'm not going to look at the chart, but tell me what's his birthday. Um, ten twenty six. 1026. Yeah, All right. Um, All right. So, um, look for, look for somewhere around July 20th. Uh, there could be a, a change in your relationship. It's likely to be a positive change. It's very likely to be a positive change, but if it is negative, here's why. Um, if it, if it turns out to be negative, it is due to Mars, opposite Mars. So it's more likely that uh, the change is going to be that you uh, get freedom. Uh, there's Saturn in your seventh house right now. Uh, Saturn in the seventh house breaks down relationships. So um, with Saturn here and with change coming in the sign of a relationship in the house of romance, um, it's likely it's likely that your relationship has an expiration date. All right. Okay. I don't know how you feel about that, but uh, some shit is about to change, and it may <laughs> not. It, it, it may not feel good. Some is Saturn breaks things down and degrades things, and then at the end of this two-year cycle with Saturn, there's likely to be someone new before we get to 2020, who is someone long-term. Yeah. That's the cycle you're in. Uh, that's what I'm talking so somewhere about. Somewhere around the 20th, there could be a major shakeup. It may li it may linger. It may not actually kick off until the full moon, which happens at the end of the month with the eclipse. Oh, hell yeah. That's when it's going to happen, right around the eclipse. So the eclipse is going to be on the 27th. Look, I was in a relationship last year, August 21st, right? And the eclipse occurred. It hit my chart, a direct hit on my chart. That day, me and my girl had the biggest fight we ever had, and it led to our breakup. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Right? So wow. you got it. You you got a direct hit. Your Mars, your Mars is going to be lit up by this solar eclipse, by this lunar eclipse, and you have a Mars opposite Mars right now. You need a reading, honey, because I'll talk the rest of this hour away, just trying to give you this. This insight. This you got some changes coming, honey. Yeah. Okay. I could. I could. I could accept that. All right. Well, okay. Renee, I thank you for calling. That's what I'm talking about. I hate that it's gonna be your fault that y'all break up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But um, okay. I thank you for watching the show. You you been you been a good sport, and I appreciate. Have it. Have a good one. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Hey, Amen. Awesome. Yeah. That's um. You, are you ready? 
Oh, I'm always ready. Oh, okay. Right, well, Z, Z, Z. All right, you Andrew, give me them. Uh, what, what's your what's your math? All right, so I was born at 3.14 p.m. And I was born in Greenville, South Carolina. Plantation. Greenville, South Carolina. All righty. Okay. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. Are you ready okay. for this, though? Because I already know. So you've lived all of your life. Uh, thinking you were an airy sun, Libra moon? Mm, no. Or, uh, or, or better yet, let's see, this is what you were thinking actually. Because that's what I know you are. Mm -hmm. You were thinking you are a Taurus sun and a Scorpio moon. Uh, yeah, I see where yeah. you're going with that. Okay, all right, <laughs> all right. Um, so are you a perfectionist? Uh, no, I'm not. No, that's why you're not um, a Taurus sun and a Scorpio moon. Mm. <laughs> when we flip this over to sidereal astrology, okay, um, you become you become a woman who identifies herself with her hair. Yes. You become a woman who um, who has never really met a stranger. Um, you are, there is a measure of drama associated with you. Either you attract drama or you create it for attention. Uh, you kind of love attention. You got a little bit of love for, for getting some attention and you are easily flattered. Tell me when I'm wrong. No, continue, please. <laughs> she said continue. All right, you're generally good tempered. Uh, although you can be high, strong, and quick to anger, you get over it rather quickly. You're very forgiving, and you don't hold a grudge. Um, you have a very sunny personality with Leo on the rise. Mm. Um, with Leo rising, that puts Scorpio in the fourth house. This tells me that there's some theme of red and black in your home. Tell me about that. Besides my hair. Okay, besides your hair. The, um, um. So this generally, here's how it generally plays out. The bedroom or the room that you most spend time in is either uh, kept dark on purpose, low light, maybe lit with a candle, or there's dark colors like red and deep black, or deep black and uh, deep red and black uh, in in the in the color schemes. Mm -mm. Um, if 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 it doesn't play out physically, then very few people know where you live or have been to your home, right. which is it? Well, it's the second one, because my house okay. is very bright. Okay, all right. So um, then it's it's with the Scorp with Scorpio in the fourth house, mm -hmm. it's either dark room, mm -hmm. red and black, the theme of the room, or very few people know where they live. Now, mom, one of your parents was rather intense emotionally, um, very, so, so icy emotions, you know, they, 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 they are quiet, reserved, secretive, you know, very little about them. The other parent uh, probably had a green thumb, loved to cook, um, was thick in the show. <laughs> they never get, got enough of, of their pleasures. Who, which parent am I describing? My mom. My mom. Is she both of them or just uh, just one of the other? Well, m my mom will be the um, the one that she actually has broad shoulders. My dad, I would consider very secretive, very quiet, um, very okay. reserved. Uh, is mom uh, uh, creative artistically or culinarily? Yes, like, she can is. Can she cook or, yes. or she green well, my dad, thumb? Or? My dad can too, though. My dad knows how to plant. He's He has the green thumb, not my mom. Okay. Okay. Um, Ms. Maxine. Hey mom, but yeah, uh, she's cook. She's well, they both cook. All but, right, and you see visions and have dreams and have psychic impressions, don't you? All the time. All the time. Yep, yep. You should you should fine tune that. You were born yeah. with Mercury retrograde in Pisces, and Mars in the eleventh house. You can't get. I mean, the twelfth house. You can't get away from it. Mm -mm. You can't get away from it. No, I cannot. Uh, so 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 hone that. 
So um, are you the eldest of your siblings? I am, yes. And you had to take on a lot of responsibility as a child. You were forced to grow up early? Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see here. Um, you've often had relationships that move fast. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the days, in the early days of the internet, did you meet a lot of people online? Um, yeah, I did. Yes, I did. And it was sudden attractions and then they, you know, it was like a quick burning fuse on a firework. It was just online. Yeah, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. the face to face um, online. So are you in touch with your own issues with commitment? Oh, yes, I am. You are. Mm -hmm. All right. So then you know that the conventional relationship will not work for you. I do know that. Yep. All right. Very well. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, don't go try to recreate what mom and dad had. Um, I'm not going to go so, so so far as to say you will be a polygamist or a polyamorous. I'm not going to say that. Yeah. But the rules of your relationship will not be, will not fit, will, will not work for the status quo. I can't hear you. I said there are no rules and I do not conform whatsoever. I just, I don't think, I, I never have. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you're an eternal student. You're always learning whether or not you are in school. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you're always teaching. Right. And you can be fiery in the way you teach. Yes, that's that uh, Jason agrees. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, in terms of money, you are penny wise, penny wise and dollar foolish. What do you mean, Darren? You can save, 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 but you will blow it on items of vanity or to make yourself feel good. Which is it? Both. Both. <laughs> yeah. Because you love your pleasures. You have a you have a quote unquote cheap streak about you, but when it comes to getting things of quality, you will pay top dollar for it. And that's where your budget goes, right? Mm, more or less. Um, you've experienced windfalls of money throughout, the life, throughout your lifetime? Mm -mm. You haven't? Mm -mm. No. Well, <clears throat> yes, I have. <laughs> and and you've been disillusioned with the money when you got it in your hand. Um, no. Or, or you gave it away in, in terms, you gave it away uh, because you saw that you could help somebody and you wound up getting taken advantage of? No, I don't help nobody. No, that didn't happen? No. Oh, no. Nobody. <laughs> no, nobody. <I'm> just <laughs> no, def no, not that one, definitely not. Um, okay. Mm -mm. No. What what happened with it? Because um, I see I see I see a windfall of money and I see loss of money, big losses. Well, <clears throat> it was saved for something that, yeah, yeah. I. <laughs> okay, okay. It's two cents. We ain't gonna talk. We don't have to talk about it. We don't have to talk about it. So listen, listen. Rainy in day. terms of an ideal mate, uh -huh. this fella, this fella is rather intellectual um he is so so i'm getting I'm, i'll just tell you the energies I, I i see that i see that potentially could work and not sun signs energies sagittarius aquarius another libra um perhaps even a Gemini. A Gemini might be a bit much. A Gemini you can have fun with, certainly have a lot of fun with, uh, but the, the the intellectual stimulation is what you're gonna need with Sun in, in, uh, in the ninth house. It, intellectual stimulation is very important to you, no? It is, yes. Mm -hmm. And someone who can vibe with you spiritually. Right. And the Sagittarius the energy and the Aquarius energy fits that. This does not mean that these people are going to be sun sign Sag or sun sign Aquarius. They may have moon, Mars, Mercury, Venus, or ascendant. 
and one of those signs. You got any questions about anything? Um, I don't know. I'm good. <laughs> you want a quick forecast? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. How'd I do? You did good. You did good. I check my natal chart often. Um, I'm still trying to figure out my ascended masters and my sun and my moon and the difference between the two and when am I in each. It is, it's, it's difficult, but um, that is something that I am working on, especially through re retrograde because I try to not be so emotional when I know it is going to be chaotic. So I just, you know, I'm, I'm not on your level, but I do, I get it. I definitely get it. Understood. Yeah. Understood. Understood. <laughs> All right. So we got Leo rising. Uh, one, two, four, five, six house. Okay. So um, you got, I would recommend, have you seen your doctor lately? I have. Or actually a dentist? No, I have not. All right, um, you might have an issue. <laughs> you might have an issue uh, whereby you need to see this dentist before we get to August 26th. Uh -huh. right? You might okay. you might have an issue with with uh, uh, your teeth as soon as July 20th. Okay. So if you know of the if you know of something going on, you might want to see a dentist. Okay. Uh, are you in a relationship currently? I am not. You are not. All right. Um, so let's see. There is the potential for meeting someone. And that can occur. All right. So let's call it one day either side of June 25th. You could possibly meet someone. I'll give you some details as to what to look for. This next year? No, this year. June the 25th? The next I'm sorry, July, July, June. July, I'm sorry. I'm about to say, okay, I can wait the next July. year. Don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> Hold on, my software just crashed. So yeah, one day either side of uh, June 24. Uh, you could meet someone and <clears throat> let me look at that chart. Hold on, I'm sorry. My my my, my uh, software just crashed. Okay. I lost everything, so I have to start over. Stanley, you go go to Piccadilly's and I'm going to the old folks. Well, Lester gonna be up there. Right. <laughs> All right, so um yeah, so you you're looking for this is what this is what I'm I'm seeing Venus and Leo. So I see a man um, uh, with a crown or a mane. So this means this could be a fellow with a head full of locks or a big fro. It's something that makes you think of a mane or he could be wearing a hat or a cap of some sort. Um, he's going to be finely dressed or at least very neat. He might have an entourage or might just walk with authority. Um, he will command attention and he might walk up to you. One day either side, one day either side of, Jan of June 24th, I would recommend, I would recommend that you get out and do something you enjoy. Also, I recommend that you um, pretty yourself up, whatever that means to you. You're gonna be having Venus going through your first house. Right, and this is a, when Venus uh, touches a part of the planet. This is something new, related to love, fashion, our looks, our beauty, our our, our appeal, uh, our attraction. So you want to make yourself appealing around these days if you are open to attracting someone new. Now, because someone shows up, does not mean that he's somebody you're going to be in a relationship with. All I see is the potential of you meeting someone. We don't know who this person is until we see his chart, right? So you could meet somebody and that meeting could be that you, you, you're you sitting at a Starbucks and it takes them too long to, um, it, make, it take them too long to um, 
to, to, to get your order, you end up having a conversation with this man who fits this look, but nothing happens beyond that. It could be something as simple as that, or it could be somebody that you explore something with down the road. We just don't know until it happens. What we do see is the potential of you meeting someone, and because you are single, it could be a relationship partner. Okay. Who knows? All Who right. knows? Well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, you can be at Piccadilly's and Lester with the locks. They try to shoot his shot <laughs> Sunday at the church. <laughs> I um, you know, like I said, hey, we are with Darren Brown here, shooting off a couple of readings real quick from the charts. Astrology 101 470 251 4343. If you got any questions or comments, man, we can go ahead and get into mine real quick. I, I don't want to see you feel like you okay. I don't know the time that I was born, I think it was in the morning, but uh, July 10th, 1980. I'm old in these streets. Everybody that just heard that, go ahead and get those. I take uh, cash gifts. Um, July 10th. More cash gifts. Monetary. Um, Money. I take advanced auto part gift cards because I got to uh, check the tire light on in my car. Oh my <laughs> uh, I thought I had you in here, but I don't. So uh, you say you don't know what time you were born, so we will use a sunrise chart. All right, we might have to do somebody else real quick. Hold on one sec. Uh, 710 in Slickville, who we got on the line? Markeith. Markeith, what's going on, buddy? How you living in these streets? Good, man. I'm good. How y'all doing out there? Good, man. Okay. So what's on your mind this evening? Very much, man. I was calling about the astrology stuff. Okay, okay. Got a you question? Out. Trying to get your reading or you Very got a question? You're trying to get my reading. Okay. All right, so you're going to need your, your date of birth, time of birth, and your uh, location of birth. Uh, my date of birth, November 19th, 1992. Uh, I was born at 7.01 p.m. And you said the location? Mm-hmm. Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Okay. Shout out to, uh... Them 20-year-olds out there. <laughs> I know. All, all, <laughs> all the people who was born during the first season of Martin. <laughs> Hey. hey. <laughs> yeah. All right, Marquis, um, you have problems with your hip. You ever have a high school injury with the hip or the back, low back? Uh, not really. I mean, I had uh, I had back pain sometimes, low back pain sometimes, but that's like used to. Okay. All right. Then the next question is, because I don't like the way you a ask, you answered that. How about uh, issues with your teeth and knees? Yeah, issues with your teeth and knees? Uh, my teeth. All right. Wisdom teeth? Nope. Just teeth in general? Front. Front teeth in general. Okay. All right. Um... I don't like the way you answered that one either. Okay, let me ask you this. Because because normally normally you know when when they know they know and it's it's dead on it's it's no no ambiguity no no doubt. So how about this, uh, Marquis? Um, let's see. So you're you're a guy who is very emotionally intense. Um, you know you you know all your friends' secrets, but they know very little of yours. I said, you know your friends' secrets, but they don't know yours. Like you, you keep your friends' you secrets, you like a crypt friend. keeper. Your friend for your friends, your friends come and tell you they dirt, but don't nobody know your dirt except for maybe one or two people, if that. And if they do know, they don't know at all. Uh, your phone, the phone sound kind of muzzled. Like are you me. um, are you messy? <laughs> no, I ain't messy. 
Okay. <laughs> nice. Do they know? Do they know your business? Your friends? Yeah. Know you? Oh, they do. They know right. some, not all though. Okay. You okay. you know theirs though. So. Yeah, I know some, but not all. <laughs> okay. So what we're experiencing here, y'all, is because we don't have a birth time, you know, it's like grasping in the dark. Oh, he did. So there's he another a technique. There's another technique I can use. Don't worry. Didn't another you technique I can use. I'm going at 7.01 p.m. He, he said. Going at 7.01 p.m. 7.01 p.m. I'm then. sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, does this personality fit you? You're a person that is rather graceful and harmonious. You got very basic needs. You love good food, uh, a comfortable place to live, good sex, uh, and lots of all three. I can say that one more time. Marquis, he said, are you a, a happy person and do you like to have a lot of sex? <laughs> <laughs> and do you have do you have a lot of sex, Marquis? Do you like to eat good food? Do I like food? Yeah. Yes, and sex. Yes, I love food. And yes, and yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> right. oh are you are you are you stubborn and Gotta rigid? Gotta be excited for a minute, though. Let's keep rolling. <laughs> are you stubborn and rigid? <laughs> are you uh stubborn and rigid? You said, am I stubborn? Yeah. Would your friend? Would your people consider you stubborn? I mean, I guess some people tell me that at times, but that's only certain situations. So, yes. And rigid. Right, right, right. right. And uh, so no. so you don't like to get angry, and it takes you a long time to get there. But once you pissed off, you like a, a bull in the china shop, and you'll destroy everything in your sight. Yeah. That's every man. False. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. Um, you're very slow and reserved. You will not be pushed or rushed by anyone. Yeah. Right? All right. Um, you love your pleasures and you can't get enough of them. What's your addiction? You got a, you got a vice, something you just can't get enough of. What is it? You say I got something I can't get enough of? Yeah, what's your yeah. vice? The advice? What's your... What yeah, what's your what's your pleasure? Your guilty pleasure. Don't be shy. Uh, um, I don't know. You ain't gonna get in trouble. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know off the back. <laughs> All right, understood. I, I I and I understand why too. And this is a case where uh, we have a a young man who is in his early twenties, and oftentimes people at this level in life don't fully know who they are, and that's not a slight. Because we were all 26 once upon a time, and we're all fucking clueless about who and what we are were, you know. So uh, it's okay that you don't know this. I can tell you this, uh, Marquis. Um, you have some habits, and one of those habits is something that can attribute to uh, a bad health, right? These habits generally are something that we consume, be that rich, sweet foods and a whole lot of it, or worse, alcohol or drugs. So um, if it is the food intake, watch the calories. Because of the way your chart is lined up, because of the way your chart is lined up, um, diabetes is indicated in your chart, all right? So with, with Mars, oh, I'm sorry, with Moon and, and uh, Jupiter and Virgo in your chart, there is the potential for you to be very health conscious still giving in to that guilty pleasure. So if you do that, do it in moderation. You know, um, you might not be a vegetarian right now. You might have a garbage appetite right now, but sometime between the ages of 28 and 30, that's gonna change. And you're gonna become more health conscious and it's gonna be a hobby and a passion for you. You might even start cooking um, uh, on a, on a on a whole nother level. Does that resonate with you now at all? Yeah, I actually do got a problem with my appetite right now. All right, cool beans. So, so, so get on top of that, man. Get on top of that. All right. Um, um, I, yeah, yeah. Let's see here. Um, you got million money making ideas. You just don't move fast enough to get them going. Is that right? You're always thinking about ways to make money. 
You say you got a million money making ideas, but you just don't move fast enough on them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct. All right. Uh, so, so there is a business waiting for you, and it is it is pertaining. It's either a business or a job, and uh, it's working with technology. All right. And I also yeah. see I also see the potential for multiple streams of income for you. Right. Um, but yeah. it's, it's not going to knock on the door, bro. It ain't going to come knock on the door. You got to exercise and put into action one of these ideas, one of these brilliant ideas that you have. Um, this solar eclipse, this eclipse season may bring an opportunity for you to make a big move in terms of uh, um, a business of sorts, all right? Something, something positive is likely to happen sometime um, into this month, into August, something positive that could be an opportunity for you to, to, to make some money long-term. And it may also bring an opportunity for travel. Okay, now. Okay, now. I like that. Okay. I like that. <laughs> that sounds good. Mm. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, so, uh, yeah, that's all I got for now. I want to move on. Jason. Oh, any relationship input real quick there? Um, for for him? Yeah. Is he in a relationship? You you got a girl, Marquis? Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. He says yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Kind of barely, maybe. maybe. All right. Well, um, <laughs> well, that relationship. So let's see. About probably around the beginning of the year. You guys became aware of some issues and one of you started thinking in terms of how much longer is this going to go on basically an expiration date started filtering in around the beginning of the year and uh, maybe about two months ago um, there was an issue there might have been an issue a few days ago maybe five days ago three days ago over the weekend what happened friday what happened Friday? Huh? What happened on Friday? Huh? What happened on Huh? What happened on Friday? Oh, uh, it was an argument. It was a big argument. Yeah. Yeah. Race look, uh, look. Saturn is regulating this relationship. If you wanted to survive, if you wanted to survive, both of you are going to have to take responsibility for the values you bring to the relationship and the values you take from it. If you are not giving the ample value to the relationship, it's doomed. If she's not giving the value that the relationship deserves, it's doomed. If you are not receiving it from her and she's not willing to give it to you, it's a wrap. It's just a matter of time before the clock strikes 12. You can salvage it, but Saturn is here to regulate it. There's something that's out of balance, right? Somebody's right. doing too much of something and not enough of something else. He so said, um, he is good. As said. So yeah. <laughs> what um what about two months ago? What happened two months ago? Uh, what did happen two? Oh, I well I had a daughter born two months ago. Mm. Okay, all right. So that kept you okay. So is uh is this the the daughter of your current relationship partner? Yeah. All right. So this kind of this kind of settled things down then. Two months ago. Mm -hmm. All right, and and then uh, now now we're six weeks out, and eight weeks out, ten weeks out, and here come trouble again. So listen, th this year this year is going to be a bit rough, both to the pockets and in the relationship. In fact. This thing could linger, man. This thing could linger for the next two years. All right? And it may <laughs> not clear up. He it said may it not linger clear up one years. way or another until 2020. So some shit got to change. Somebody got to take on some responsibility that they haven't been taking on. Uh, you know what it is better than I do. Yeah. Mm. And, and for you... 
for you, your chart says, get the hell out of your feelings. You and your feelings? Get out of your feelings. He you said, your chart says, get the hell out of your feelings. Mm. Does, it, does that make sense? It makes sense. All right. Cool beans. All right, man. Appreciate the call, Marquis. All right. <laughs> All right. And so we, uh, we, we're going to do mine real quick before you get on up out of here. Hey man, it's been dope. These folks been like, so Jason, I, you know, it would be cheating. I know you personally, so I don't really want to read your chart per se, but what I will do for you is because your birthday is coming up, um, I'm going to give you a $150 gift and that's a solar return reading. Solar right? return reading. Solar return is a, a, that's a birthday reading. Okay. That's a reading for, so the solar return gives us insight into the potential of the next 12 months. Gotcha. All right. <laughs> yeah, the solar, the solar chart. Birthday read, $150 gift on deck. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so you born in Chicago. Yeah. I, mean, I was just up there. I ain't never been so hot in my life. Ever. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> you live in Georgia, bro. What you talking about? No, nah, this, nah, this is different heat up there. This, uh, <laughs> I this know, weekend. man. I don't. I don't know what's going I on. I don't. No wind, no You're wind. like a furnace, right? An oven. And I was on the grill. I was on the, It wasn't even. It was an open. The open joint. Not in. <laughs> so I had that. I had all the smoke and the dope in my eye. All caked up in my beard and everything, man. I'm telling you, it's crazy, yo. Like, I, I don't think I've ever been that hot in my life. Is it smell right. still there? Yeah, it was in there. I had to use that uh, cheap, that cheap hotel shampoo, but that didn't get it out yet. It just made my beard hard. I don't know how those, uh... <laughs> Hold on, I'm almost there. I got to adjust your chart. Hell no. Man, look, Lindsay, I don't think I've ever been that hot in my life. Like, you ain't get no tan, though. No, I'm... I'm Look, I'm chocolate now. <laughs> I'm chocolate now. I was out there. I had, I did have on a, uh, a good little bucket, yeah, so that I ain't get, so I ain't get burned up. Look, I would be calling. All right, seven ten eighty, right? Yes, sir. Okay. All righty then. Well, um, bad. <clears throat> so, Jason, um. You got some money matters, some lessons pertaining to money to learn this year. Uh, this is a year to put your finances in order. Uh, you got to look at your attitudes towards money. Uh, this, this speaks to emotional spending. There is Mars conjunct Mercury um, in your... Hold on, hold on. Let me make sure I'm looking at this right. It's no strip clubs for me. Get emotional up in there. You don't need to be in there no way. Like she can have it all. <laughs> oh, I know I would be spending money like that. In the strip club, all feeling right. like Carl Thomas. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, expect some um, changes in your beliefs around money. Um, and and you might, you might explore some income potential where you create that, that income. Basically, you might explore uh, entrepreneurship or uh, starting some, some business on the side. There's some new money coming from another place. Um, and it's likely uh, uh, because you take some sort of risk or a chance on something, all right? Um, there is indications of, so siblings, is there a sibling you're not getting along with? No, my brother and sister? I. Sister? My brother and I, we get along great. You have a sister? No. You don't have a sister? No. Okay. Just a sister in law. Just a sister in law, but we cool. All right. Cool beans. Cool beans. All right. Um, is there. There's an indication. Oh, there's two indications of some changes in the house, some changes in the home. Um, now, if you were a woman, I would say that this is a year where you are fertile. 
Um, because you are a man, I will say that there is an indication that between this birthday and your birthday of next year, there is going to be someone new living in your home. Mm -hmm. um, this could be a relative. Um, this could be a boarder, like you're renting out a, a room. Uh, this could be a new child. Yeah. This could be a child. Yeah. But so, there's an indication of some change in the home this year, all right? Uh, you know something I don't know? Me? No, we got some stuff going, you know. Yes. All right. Um, so do you you work in an office environment on your day job? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you got Venus in your seventh house. It's in your sixth house suggesting um, organizing your desk. Does that fit? Getting the workplace organized? And they about to move my desk, man. I'm about to have the worst uh, desk situation set up in, in the world. I'm at the okay. Yeah. Well, I, right I, now, I, I nice. see some sort of, some kind of change, but I don't see a loss. I just see some sort of a reorganization, uh, some uh, a new work, a new lifestyle on the job in some way. Uh, um, they should uh, give me a raise. The need to organize, huh? They, they need to give me a raise. Or something, uh, office. All right, let's see what else we got going on. Um, <clears throat> is there an elder in the family that's ailing? Uh, yeah. All right, because I, I see the potential. I don't know what this means, but I see the potential for an inheritance. Are you receiving something, some sort of substantial monetary or some sort, some sort of possession that is substantial and it, it reads as though it is an inheritance now um, it could be the result of an investment if you've made a smart one in the past years it could be a payoff of some sort of investment it could also mean that you pay off a debt this year that's been lingering but it could also be the receiving of something from someone outside of you <clears throat> All right. Um, I also see you taking on new responsibilities on the job. Now, this may force you to consider um, a new job. There could come an offer that may bring a relocation. There could come an offer that brings a relocation. There is a shift in your career. I don't see you losing your job. I see you changing uh, career paths. Or making a dip, uh, another step in your career, or or going off to do your own thing. There's changes coming in these next 12 months for you, bro. Okay, I'm, I'm all right. down for some change. Um, there is some turbulence indicated with within a group of friends or uh, some network that you are associated with. Um, there's some strife brewing amongst a group of friends or within the circle of friends. It may be, it, it might be one of your older friends, one of the groups of your older friends. It may be one of those. It could be a direct conflict with you. You could referee the conflict. You could be a part of it. But there's conflict indicated amongst your network uh, or your, your, your close friends. Okay. And you may be required to work really, really hard to make a dream come true this next year. You might not be clear on what that is right now, but you're gonna have to put your nose to the grindstone between now and November on some task that you want to accomplish. Does that anything resonate with that? Yeah. I been thinking about it and kind of dragging my feet on it, but I, I have an idea about some stuff I know I need to do moving forward with some with some stuff okay. that I'm working on. Cool. cool. Any questions? I mean, relationship sound, I mean, it didn't come up, so it might be tight. So I'm, I'm all right on that <clears> front. <throat> well, let me, let me take, I did look at that, but uh, let me take a look at the relationship house for that year this year so other than 
maybe an occasional spat or somebody being hypercritical. Oh, I know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't see any turbulence. I don't see any turbulence in the relationship. Nothing that that's that that's uh, not out of the ordinary. Yeah, I don't see anything like that. That's what's up. I, um, I will give you a preview though. Next year, after after your birthday next year, there's going to be some challenges. There's going to be some challenges. But it could be. Challenges? It could be because of work. Oh. Could be because of work. Yeah, them, I got you. All right. All right. How'd I do, man? Hey man, you hey, this is great, man. This is a lot of good information. Um, I'm sure that the people that called in and you know, along with myself and Z, yep. um, we got some valuable information as well. Um, anybody that's interested in uh, or has some thoughts in pursuing it more, I'm pretty sure that that this helped fuel that because I mean it's just it's it's good information if you got the if you got the eye for it. Um, yes, sir. I, I know that she. She was real, real interested in it. We definitely was one of the shows that I wanted to make happen for her. And I'm glad that she was available um, to do this because, I mean, this type of stuff, you, you just can't find like find people that you trust to to do that. Because anybody can say anything and they just be like, oh, yeah, word. But, I mean, we had people like, man, you know, he good. And, yeah, that was right. And, you know. You can, you can tell, like, you could hear, even when Renee was on, you could hear her uh, sighing and and making a little, oh, God, like, as you as you were talking, so, you know. Yeah, I could hear that. And so, yeah, we I mean, we could hear it right here, and, uh, and even when Marquise was like, he is good. Like, <laughs> <laughs> these are all things that, um, like, you know, we know it hits, it's good, so, man. I yeah, that's the beauty it. of what we do, man. It's. If the charts indicate it, it's very likely somewhat, somewhat uh, uh, relevant to the person I'm talking to. You know, um, it may not, it may not play out exactly how it comes out of my mouth, but they know I'm talking about them. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing science. It's an absolutely amazing science. Sure, I was gonna start looking into that stuff for myself, but I know two of y'all, so I'm not gonna do it. Um, but anybody that's trying to follow, tell everybody how they can follow you or uh, get in contact with you if they want to, if they uh, want to read or something later on. Okay, that's fine. So uh, you can find me on Facebook at Darren Lamont, D A R R Y N L O L A M O N T E. Uh, you can also find me on uh, on Facebook, Darren Lamont. Uh, or, I'm sorry, Astro Visions. Just search Astro Visions, and my 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 blog will come up. Uh, my website, Darren Lamont dot Setmore, S E T M O R E dot com. That's where you can you can see all of my services and schedule yourself a reading. And on the on the appointed time, I will call you and 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 give you even more detail than I went into on this public show. Hey, well, right? we appreciate that, man. We thank you for coming on, man. Thanks um, for having me. We'll probably be seeing you in a couple months, man. So. Like I said, I definitely appreciate it, appreciate it, man. Like I said, everybody go ahead and follow him. Hit him up if you got any questions. Um, but, yeah, we're going to be in touch, Darren, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. My Thank pleasure. You. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you, Asia. We'll see you guys next time. All right. Bye. Take it easy, man. Mm -hmm. That was interesting. That was some, that was that was great. some hidden stuff. And a lot to think about. A lot to think about. Like, you know, you, you read these things, and sometimes if they come out on the negative side of the game, you want to um, you try to do stuff to make it not happen. Like, had I been that lady that they said I was going to burn my foot, I probably would have walked around with Jodeci boots on every Friday <laughs> you know, just, just to make sure that nothing happened to my feet. Or totally ignored what he said and just kept doing the normal. Oh, well, yeah. Well, just, yeah. You know, and... And they'd be like, oh man, you know that thing did say I had to be patient today. This fool said, Jodeci, I just can't. Hey, look, I did want to, uh, I did want to talk about it. See, you don't, you don't eat barbecue no more. Mm -hmm. Do you eat, like eat. sis kebabs or something like that? If you go to, if you get invited to a. Not if it's on the grill with the meat or, you know, 
but the meat was there and then you nah. so they can't even clean it out first and then yeah, put they the can stuff cl- yeah but it's got to be clean I don't, i'm not i'm not that i'm not that person you know like i go to cookouts and fish fries all the time okay. i'm not that person because i was uh you know it's always like barbecue etiquette that people need to that people need to take into consideration like and when I say that, I ain't even, I wrote this before this weekend. Like I said, I was sitting, standing over a grill in 100 degree weather and um, with the open, with the open joint. So, you know, I had to watch that. I'm talking about, I'm out there flipping. Like I was at McDonald's or Burger King okay. and my, and my, my coals was burning super hot. So I was, I was out there, out there. I'm talking about, I thought I was, I thought I was rotisserie in myself. <laughs> But, you know, I was talking about, I was thinking about barbecue etiquette. And, you know, one of the things that I came up with was like, hey, you know, if you drop some meat, like, in the grill, and you got got four seconds to get the soot off before, then you can put that right back on. (laughs) You know, as long as you, as long as, like, you know, because it might fall on some charcoal. It's not actually on the ground. You can get get the little soot off, put it back on the grill, extra season it. It's all good. That's like dropping it on the floor. No, it's different from dropping it on the floor because nobody walked on those coals, but people walked on the ground. So that makes it okay. Yeah. I mean, because sometimes it might, you remember like, well, you probably don't, but something when we were flipping those burgers, sometimes some of them like went in between. Oh, so y'all get them and... So we just pulled it right back out, checked it. And put th- it back on there. Throw it right back on there. It's good to go. Mm-hmm. Good no, no, to go. That don't sound. What if they come to the cookout, they fix them plates to go. They just got there now. And then they still eat eat a plate. But they already fixed their to-go plate. It's wrapped up, tied up, and it's put off to the side. I take that plate and charge them to get it back. <laughs> so I, I, that was the next one. Like if your if the invite is free. The food you, is free. And you bring foil, uh the the cut the, the to go is not free. You bring food and then Take what you brought. So you gotta know them like that. Like you might be able to do it, but if I invited you, your friends can't bring for it. Like. But why? Cause I'm not feeding a whole community. Like, what if I wanted leftovers tomorrow? And and your friends. Then you fix your plate took, before everybody gets there. They took food inside. for them and they kids. See, I think that's the part that I don't like is when people take food for them and their kids. And you be like, wait, but I don't even like them. <sighs> you, you mean to tell me I got to feed your kids for the whole week? I ain't doing no. Mm-mm. Also, you should have to pay and you should have to clean up behind that. You should have to clean. If you're going to take a plate, then you should have to have a clean up. No, absolutely no. Why? Why should I? But it's free. Like, it's free. Everything is free. You take, it's free. Who, who free for who? Everybody. Not for the people who cook and bought it. So what? Oh. Oh. <laughs> clean it up is free. It'd be free clean that up. Would be, that would be nice. That would. That would be absolutely wonderful. It would. But. Cause then we out here buying to go plates and all this other stuff. Now nah, that's one thing. Like, okay, so don't buy to go plates and don't buy aluminum foil. What they gonna put the food in? In their pocket. You know, some of the people will put a fully dressed hot dog in their pocket. To go plates. We don't have to go plates. So you don't take nothing with you. So you don't take. I made, I made just enough for the people to eat what they were gonna eat here. If you didn't eat here, then you weren't hungry. We purposely at a reunion did not have to go places for that reason. And right. we had no problems. Right, you know what? I was, uh, so after the barbecue this weekend, I went and did, went and cooked, made all that food. And when I when I got done, they was like, hey, take what you want. It looked like a, it looked like just a free for all. Like you should have seen the, the stacks and piles of plates that people had uh, hot dogs and burgers and and bread and they a whole a whole cup full of potato salad yeah. and whatnot. And look, if you ask who made the potato salad and you can't make potato salad, you gotta go. Have you seen that movie? Who made 
potato salad? No, who, who in that movie? Julio White, Urkel. Um, it's a good movie though. What? Pinky in it from um. I'll say it again. Who made the potato Clifton salad? Clifton Davis. Clifton Davis. I said Julio White. Clifton. Yes, yes, he was in it too. Yep. No, it's it Clifton too. Davis. Clifton Powell. Clifton Powell. Clifton <laughs> Davis is actually. Ha ha. I remember. Man. Well, 710 Slate Lil, what's going on, male man? Man, what's going on, man? I see y'all changed the set, y'all changed the number. Hey, man. Hey, there's a whole lot that changed around these streets, brother. It's... What's really going on here? I thought the NBA was the only one doing all the changes around here. No, nah, you should come on through, brother. This status network land, Nick. <laughs> this <laughs> candy <laughs> land. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, What's going on, y'all? Hey, hey, man, I, 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 I dig this new setup, man. I feel like I, I, I should have wore a, a, a suit jacket and a, and a, and a V neck. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> is it that? Yeah, is it that kind of check? Hey, Dino, what's happening, y'all? Hey, what up, Dino? Dino hey, Mike. Hey, man, y'all down there kicking it, huh? Well, we go a little bit, man. A little bit. You know, I got. I've been having to work, so we can't do a whole lot. Hey, man, look, don't be responsible, man. Don't even go to work, cuz. Just, shoot, just, have, just be lazy and have barbecues every day. Go hey, to the, then, I won't, then I won't be mailman mobile. I'll be unemployed. <laughs> just go, you to don't the, want that? go to the pool hall. Take Vince with you. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'll lose a long $5 at the pool hall. <laughs> look. Look, all you gotta do is drive. Vince can throw the mail. That's all. That's all. Hey, hand me that. <laughs> hand me that beer from the back, Dino. Y'all, y'all be like, uh, y'all be like Tupac and Joe Torre. Hey, we gotta do what we gotta do. Where's my Janet? <laughs> yeah. Where's my Janet? That's what I want. Where's my Janet? Well, you want like Janet Perez though. Hey. <laughs> Got him. <Hey>. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, I, I like all colors of the spectrum, man. I know, I know, I know. Hey, somebody. Dino, what's so funny, Dino? What's so funny? <laughs> somebody, somebody, uh, Amanda tagged me in a picture of Maya that had uh, Maya with the new blonde hair. How you feel about that? Man, I wasn't feeling that, man. I was I was kind of hurt she did that. Because her, her long black hair, what, 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 that's part of the thing that got me hooked. Oh, well, now you, you got that long black curly hair, hair, man. I was hooked. Is that a wig? Uh, I hope it's a wig. It's long. It's real long. I guess almost to the butt long. That's unbelievable. So now you're just talking about your what? So, so did, yeah. Car did Kardashian pass her? No, no, man. Ain't nobody passing the Maya, man. Oh, okay, I was gonna make, it, I was gonna make she sure. She just made a she just made a little mistake in life. <laughs> we all, we all have our moments. Man, she gonna come get that CD back. It's gonna. No, no, it's man. Gonna be no, ruined. Nah, she gonna have to get a bodyguard to get this one back. Hey, ask Dino is that CD still in good shape? No, no, it's not. No, no, no. that CD can't be seen. <laughs> that CD is it's in a private place. Nobody to touch it. You should. Hey, I tell you what you should do, man. Is you should get the uh, you should get that cover. You should get that cover uh, put up in the black like it was uh, like they do the platinum records. Yeah, yeah. I want to put the whole thing in the display. The whole thing. And if I get if I can find a way to to have the voice where you can push the button on the display and, and the voice come up and say, Hi, Mailman Moby. <laughs> Thank you for everything you've done for the 710 to 6 Mail show. You know, I, have you memorized the whole thing yet? I was just getting ready to say sound like it. No, but it, it plays twice in my, in my, uh, on my, uh, player. So when I'm listening to my music at work, and then, uh, all of a sudden, when the song goes off, then I hear, Hi, Mailman Moby, <laughs> and, and everything stops. Everything stopped. I stopped putting mail in the box and I just wait for a minute and 37 seconds. Wow. And it's like, and I. And then I continue. I can resume. They're going to be like, hey, the uh, post office GPS is going to be like, hey, so uh, you have 14 
one minute and 37 seconds stops. Uh, what's that all about? I'm going to be like, well, I was just stretching my leg, man. You know, these legs get tired. Hey, man, that is, that's wild, man. That's wild, man. But I'm glad, uh, I'm, I'm still, I'm, that's one of the best moments on the show, man, uh, to this day. It's, uh, yeah, man, that was, that was good stuff, man. That's playing that stuff. on the show. You can't beat that. Hey, man, man, you, uh, what y'all doing for the fourth, man? Y'all got some, y'all got, y'all going to a barbecue? Yeah, some of the guys that work, they throw a little barbecue, we're going to get around there and, and hang out. Tomorrow we're going to probably go to this little red hot and boom thing and watch the fireworks up in there. Hey man, when you go to that barbecue, you gotta make sure they follow those, those protocols and that etiquette, man. Like, hey, if you touch it, it's yours. What you mean if you touch it, it's yours? I mean, the buns, meat, cookies, chips, any of that stuff that touch your hand, it can touch the back of your fingernail, it's yours. So when you tan that bun, you trying to reach in there and grab the bun, and you gotta kinda flick the other bun off, that other bun is yours, even if you got one hot dog. You got two buns. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I understand it, but you know the hot dog bun. You know they automatically come come together. You know they, you automatically gotta touch one of them at least. Well, you touch the one that you touch is yours. If you gotta but touch two of them, they come in. You know how when you pull out two of them, I mean pull out one, another one is already connected to it. I, the problem solving one on one. Here's what you do: you hold one outside the outside the bag, and you tear the one that you want from inside the bag. That's how that works. Let's see. Ain't nobody got time for that. Hey, man, well, then you got two hot dog buns. I see somebody. <laughs> 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 but you, you right, though, y'all. You right, though. I don't want nobody hand all on my, my bun. Because, look, what, what hey, a see, <laughs> hey, see, I, I see you over there smiling. You probably over there smiling when I say I don't want nobody hand on my bun. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, good look. I tell you what, man. You go to those little office potlucks and you can see those people out there uh, touching all the food and putting stuff back like, oh, well, they pick something up. They pick up a, a handful of chips and some of the chips fall out their hand back into the into the pile. Hey, man, that one right there, that's yours, too. That one, that's yours. They skip yeah, out on the hand wash, too. They skip yeah. out on the hand wash. Yeah. And people be looking at me like I'm the bad person because I say, hey, that's yours. What? What, 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 what do you mean? Hey, man, no. Don't you tell people? Yeah. What? Or, you know, when they, um, so you know when like, somebody in there trying to grab a piece of pizza, slice of pizza, and that one is not cut all the way through, so they got to kind of try to break it apart? Hey. Yeah. Both of those pieces are yours. Don't break so, one. So, what if you're trying to get two of them off, and, and what if you're like, okay, well, I go, I'm going to take these two, but then the third one is hooked on to it. If you got to touch it, this is yours, too. Oh, man. You, well, what you going to do about it? You, you taking food from everybody else now just because you worry about somebody else's pinky nail on it. This nasty is called germs. Come on, man. Come on, man. man. Yeah, it's yours. It's yours. Yeah. It belongs on, to man. you. Come y'all cut that out. You are the new owner. Hey, I, I tell you this too, man. Look, if your kid has more than one open, half-finished pop, then you got to finish all of them, and y'all got to leave. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Yeah, you, yeah. I ain't never been a fan of kids leaving half, half total. They got a, they got every <laughs> flavor of Fanta open, half, half full, full. And, <laughs> and, you, and you got to finish drinking them, and then y'all got to go. Y'all got to go. Wow. Yeah, but see, they didn't do that when we. They uh. They monitor the, the soda from oh, at our family reunion. <laughs> we got somebody to monitor. If we, the kids come over there, y'all get one of these little 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 square juices and get out of get you ain't getting none of these grown folks soda. What about cookouts with no coolers? Drinks and juice. Who do that? Drinks. <laughs> well, I went. I went to a cookout and there were no coolers. There were trash cans with trash bags, and it was soda inside the trash. Oh, and ice? they had all the ice on top of it. Oh yeah, that's dope. And you dig it in the oh. trash cans. To you get just go. You just go get a freezer bar. That's ridiculous. <laughs> wait, wait. It was a. It was a. It was a cookout with just trash bag with ice and soda. It in was it? trash cans with trash bags inside. Were sodas and 
beer and water, and then on top was oh, okay. ice. Oh, okay. Well, that, well, that's cool. That, that's a cooler. That's, that's a cooler. A, that's a cooler. But that's not a cooler. You just go get a freezer burn and try to find what you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's it. That's, in fact, that's even better than a cooler. The only thing it don't have is a top. You just gonna get all the frostbite. That's ridiculous. It's all right. And you, you have a lot more room. I'm not even understanding why y'all okay with that. You can put more stuff in there. You get yeah, one yeah, garbage yeah. can full of... With one garbage can full of cokes and pops and whatnot, or fifteen coolers. Yeah, that's that's cooler. That's one garbage cooler. can. Come on now, you gotta save money. He just told you that. <laughs> Trying to be all bougie and whatnot. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I'm yeah, just... you being bougie. That's hey, not bougie. Hey, Moby, where you stand? Where you stand on people taking plates from the barbecue? How many plates? Taking plates. Yeah, how many taking plates can home? they make? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, you get you get uh you get two plates. You get one for the food and then one for the dessert. <laughs> All right. We talking about taking them home. Cause they trying to cause they trying to take home food for like everybody. Two of their the aunties. Only, only people that I, that's able to take more than two plates home is when the wife or the husband are taking one home to their mate. That's it. You can't take one home to your kids because they should have came. But, but the, the wife or the mate should have came too then. No, but they might have something else they needed to do. Oh. They, they, they might have something important to do, but and they just want to they want to make sure they, they take care of What if of you have home. a grandparent that's in the nursing home and they want something to eat? Are they allowed to take a see, plate to see, them? See, look, you going too far. Oh. Yeah, what if, what if you got a friend that asked. got What if you friend got a friend that got a huge family? And so they got to take hot dogs home for all four of their kids and a wife. No, no, the kids don't. The kids don't get a plate to go home. The kids should have came. But what it, the only people that are able to take the plate home is when you take it home to your mate, and that's because you're looking out for your significant like, other. No, but even if they came, even if they came, so all them, it, they had six people come. So uh -huh. him and his wife and four kids, and so they all ate, and now they got to take a plate home for all of them. Oh man, that's a lot of food they taking up out of that house. That's a lot of yeah, food. Yeah, you you might have to limit that. That's a, that's that, yeah, that that pretty Just much. You don't yeah. have to go plates. I tell you what, I feel like if anybody in your party waste any food, so if they don't eat like all the chicken, or if they have like half eaten hot dog or something like that, then they can't take no food home. I think that's the uh, rule. So, so if they. So if they eat everything, then they're allowed it to take home. Yeah, food. yeah, yeah. But if you if you waste the food, sometimes you sometimes you see more than you well, more than you you think your stomach is. is That's true. Well, then you say that half. My mom used to say, yeah. I forgot the saying though. Your eyes got too big for your stomach. Yeah. But you could go and ahead that, and wrap up that half eaten hot dog. You take that home. Don't go get you a brand new one. Home. Go go get you a brand new one. Go do the same thing again. Fix another one of the big old plates. Come on, man. So, so what you saying is they need to take the half hot dog home, but they can't take nothing else home? You take the half hot dog home, but you can take a little bit more. But you, you can't be out here making a whole brand new plate that you just threw away half of when you first started eating. Okay. Then. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I understand that. It's a bad just idea. Just put aside the half-eaten food and let people take their home. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Pick, pick from that. <laughs> Boy, y'all mean over there, boy. Y'all oh, mean with the plate. Right now? You get that piece of chicken right Oh, my goodness. That's terrible. Hey, uh, if you're a vegan, hey, man, don't oh. come to the barbecue talking trash about what's on the menu. Okay. No, nobody got yeah, you No, you can't. If you're a vegan, you automatically know what's going down at a, at a, at a, at a reunion or some kind of cookout. You, you can't. Man. But don't force you it on know us, though. Going down. But don't force Just it on us. Just come on up there with your little seafood. Yeah, no, no. Nah, they don't even like seafood. But don't force it well, on us. I mean us. seaweed, whatever they call it, the seaweed. Oh, yeah, well, that's we fine. hit you with some of them tofu ribs. Yeah. But don't be fixing me a fish plate and putting it in my huh. face like I'm going to eat it when you know I don't eat meat. Daddy, if you're watching, don't do that. <laughs> Shut up. Don't don't bring the, the plate in your face. Don't fix me a, a whole fish plate full of fish that you just caught out the water because you know I like that. Don't do that and then put it in front of my face and you know I don't eat meat. That's well, disres you know what, That's you know so disrespectful. They're trying to bring you up off the but dark what side. I'm saying I'm not there to tell y'all that meat is not good for you. I'm there to enjoy you guys. Don't be. 
it, it, go, it works yeah. both ways. Vegans be out there judging folks. I don't do that. I said so. See, you got you to gotta be the one to come. You come in, you make your presence known. And then when it's time to eat, you just tell everybody, well, I'm, I'm running up here to the store real quick. No, y'all And you y'all stay gone for about 30 me. minutes. <laughs> oh, no, and I will And let everybody not. finish, and then you come back. Because, you know, we don't, we don't want you spoiling everybody's food. Well, everybody trying to eat, and you over there looking at them like, ugh. Don't you know you they just killed that? No, I don't do that. Just don't be making me no fish plate and putting it in my face. Thinking I'm going to eat it. Because I'm not. You know that got eyes. It had a name. Yeah. You know it got teeth and blood and bones and all that. Mm-hmm. You, you know that that was that was somebody's daddy. Y'all nasty. Y'all gonna take on their spirits and everything. Yeah, well, I got a lot of spirits. Got a whole bunch of them. Hey, look. Yeah, that's what vegan some of the most judgmental people I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> y'all the worst. No, 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 no. You don't eat meat, you're gonna die. Really? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I mean, we. we I'm judge. gonna die because I don't eat meat. It makes none. I'm going to die. Die. You know, on that note, hey, man, I want to thank everybody for tuning in to the 710 Sleep With Show on Status Network. Yeah. This is where we get down now. So don't um, don't miss no more shows, man. We we out here. We we doing this thing big these days. Um, and say if you miss the show, it's going to be up uh, on Facebook. We also going to put it up on uh, YouTube as well. So like I said, tune in. July 16th uh, is the next show. Same time. When you come back, I'm not going to have this beer. This beer going to be gone, son. Going to be gone. And I'm going to have a fade. You going to have a fade for real? Yes. You lying. I'm going to cut my hair off. We're going to look different together. I'm going to cut this beard off, though. I'm going to Odell Beckham it right down the middle. He's going to look like Babyface Nelson. He's going to look like Jamal Moore. Oh, exactly. Hey, we got to go hang up on this dude. Hey, y'all, take it easy. <laughs> hey, y'all, take it easy, man. We'll catch y'all next time. We out. <laughs>